So first, you multiply the 10 by the 2. That gives you 20. Are you guys even paying attention? This is so boring. Yeah, isn't there some other way we can learn? No, there isn't. So you better listen. Especially because you have assessment tests coming up. Next, <laughs> you subtract the... You know what? I can't take this anymore. You kids don't listen, your test scores are the worst in the school, and you keep breaking all the rules. Where are you going? I didn't sign up for this. I'm leaving. Good luck with your next teacher. <laughs> As you all may have heard by now, Mrs. Jacobs quit yesterday. Well, who could blame her? Her students are the most problematic ones in the school. They've already gone through three different teachers. We wouldn't even last more than a week with them. That's true. But we need to do something. Because if these kids don't pass their assessment tests, it is not gonna be good. Besides, the board is already talking about taking drastic measures. I heard at Eastmont, they replaced half their teachers. Really? I can't afford to lose my job. We need these kids to pass. That is going to take a miracle. You are so right. And on that note, I'm excited to say that we found one. I just hired someone that's not only smart, she's hardworking, patient, and a little person. Ah, hello. <laughs> Everyone, please welcome Miss Brooks. She is your new teacher. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi, I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> Wait a minute. We're all in danger of losing our jobs, and you decide to hire her? Yes. Miss Brooks is a highly qualified teacher with an impeccable record. They may as well just come and fire us all now. I am so sorry about that. Sally's been here a long time and she's not always very open-minded. It's okay, to be honest, that's not the first time I've received that type of reaction. I see. How about I introduce you to your new class? Sounds great. Oh, but I have to warn you, I have a, let's just say, unique way of teaching. Oh, uh, that, that should be fine. Uh, besides, I doubt that things could get any worse. <laughs> Shall we? <laughs> Hello, class. <laughs> Listen up! We have someone new starting today. Please welcome Miss Brooks. Hello! <gasps> Wait, are you a student or a teacher? <laughs> hey, settle down. She's your new teacher, so you'd better all do what she says. Good luck. Thanks. Hi everyone, I'm so excited to meet you all. Why are you so short? <laughs> yeah, I'm even taller than you. <laughs> You're right. Let's just say I'm unique. But being unique is a good thing. <sighs> not another board problem. That's not what we're going to do. But since you're so tall, would you mind erasing this for me? So what are we gonna do? Here, catch. Why are there numbers all over this? Wherever your thumbs land on the ball, you multiply those two numbers together. Now go. Oh, okay. Uh, nine times nine equals 81. Very good, now hit it to someone else. Okay. <laughs> Five times two equals 10. Yes. Fun. Uh, three times seven is 21. You got it. Now hit it to someone else. What do you think you're doing? Uh, just 
teach in my class, why? Well, it looked to me like you were playing volleyball during class time. Does the principal know about this? No, but I'm sure she wouldn't mind. I tried to keep my teaching not only educational, but also fun. <laughs> <laughs> fun? That will never work. Take it from me. I have the highest performing students in this school. Let me give you a piece of advice. Stick with a traditional way, and then maybe... Maybe your students will pass. Does that mean we have to stop playing? No. Not at all. <laughs> Hit it to someone else. Yes! Catch! Let's go! What are we doing here? And what are all these numbers for? We are gonna play hopscotch math. Huh? What's that? I'll show you. Can anyone tell me how to solve this problem? Does anyone know the first step? Okay, well, first you multiply... By the 10 by 2, which equals 20. Yes! But don't tell me. Show me. What do you mean? I get it. 10 times 2 equals 20. You got it. So, x plus 5 equals 20. OK, what's next? 20 minus 5 equals 15. Yes! So, x equals 15. That was brilliant. What on earth is going on here? We're playing hopscotch math. This is crazy. Having these kids jump around like monkeys doesn't teach them anything. Oh, well, it seems to be going just fine. This is nonsense. I'm going to tell. What is going on here? I'm glad you're here. Miss Brooks isn't teaching the kids anything. Yesterday, she had them throwing a ball around, and today, it's hopscotch. She's having these kids play games instead of learning. Is this true, Miss Brooks? These are all learning games. I know my style of teaching is unique, but if my life has taught me anything, it's that unique is a good thing. Not all kids learn by just writing on a whiteboard. That is a good point. In all my years of teaching, I have never seen something this foolish. This is not how kids learn. That's not true. I've learned a lot. Oh, yeah. You kids love to just have fun and waste your day playing games. You know what is on the line right now if these kids don't pass. And I don't want to put my job in jeopardy because of some new teacher's crazy ideas. You have got to tell her to stop. You really think this will work? I know it will. Well then, we will give your unique way of teaching a try. And if that does not work, then we will talk again. <laughs> Fine. But I'm warning you, you are making a huge mistake. Thank you. You are so welcome. Have fun. OK, who wants to solve the next problem? Me! 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 Daisy continues her unique style of teaching, and all the students love it. As time goes on, she continues to play more learning games with her kids. They have so much fun, but also learn a lot at the same time. Even though not everyone agrees with her style of teaching, Daisy never lets that stop her. 
Before long, all of Daisy's students are volunteering in class and having so much fun. And then comes the day of the assessment test. Daisy passes the test out to all her students, hoping for the best. A couple weeks later, everyone gets a big surprise. Next, let's discuss the upcoming holiday break. Wait, whatever happened to the assessment tests? I haven't heard anything yet, but from what I understand, the board will be coming by soon. Excuse me, Principal Adams? Ah, yes, we were just talking about you. Well, that's nice. May I have a moment with you, please? Uh, sure, um, I'll be right back. That didn't sound very good. Oh, this is so stressful. I didn't want to have to look for a new job. I tried to warn everyone. I knew this was going to happen. You guys are not going to believe this. What happened? Please don't tell me we're getting fired. Let me guess. None of Miss Brooks' students passed. I told you you should have listened to me. Not only did they all pass, they scored higher on average than any other class in this school. Really? Wow, congratulations. That's amazing. How exciting. Wait, you mean to tell me that her students scored higher than mine? Yep. And because our school improved so much, we are being officially recognized by the entire board. So, let's give a warm round of applause to Miss Daisy Brooks for her amazing work. It's so different. You're right. And I've come to learn that being unique is a good thing. Quit it. I said quit it. Hmm? Oh, why do you have to be so annoying? Can I hear a question, Nicholas? No, Mr. Labyrinth. Okay, then let's keep the talking to a minimum. Who can tell me what this stanza means? Okay. How about Andre? Um, it says, if I but love. He didn't tell you to read it. He told you to say what it meant. Pay attention. It's not your turn to talk, Nick. Well, if he wasn't tapping his pencil like a moron... Hey, we do not use that word in my classroom. Andre, just try your best. I don't know. It's about sympathy and being friends and stuff like that. I didn't call on you, Nick. Well, if we're gonna wait on him, then we're gonna be sitting around forever. Okay, Mr. Thoreau is expressing that love is the highest virtue because it binds all the other virtues together. I'm gonna give you a second to finish writing that down before we move on. If you pay attention next time, you might not make yourself look so dumb. It's not my fault. I have a learning disability, okay? Then you belong in a special ed class. Not this one. Okay, anybody need an extra second to copy this before I erase it? Andre, no rush, take your time. Here we go again. (laughs) 
My five-year-old sister writes better than you. I'm doing my best. That's your best? It's probably the worst handwriting I've ever seen. Is there a problem back there, guys? Andre's just taking too much time and holding us all up once again. If you needed more time, I would give it to you too. That never happened. I'm ready. Finally! Stop berating him, I'm serious. Okay, this next stanza I'm gonna give to you guys is, uh, oh, that is our time. See y'all tomorrow. Thanks a lot. You got me in trouble and held up class. Hey, Andre, you got a second? I'm really sorry for holding up class. I no need to apologize. I just wanted to tell you that you don't have to feel bad, regardless of what people like Nick say. What if he's right, though? Maybe I should be in special needs classes. No problem with going there if that's what you think you need. But I will say, I have seen your work and you're performing quite well. I am? Yeah. Just because we learn at different speeds doesn't mean that one person's smarter than the other. Albert Einstein didn't start talking until he was three. <laughs> Nick may not understand, but I do. My daughter also has challenges with learning. Sorry to hear that. No, don't be. She is much smarter than a lot of kids older than her. So you take all the time you need. Thank you, Mr. Lamper. I really appreciate you helping me out. Don't mention it. See you tomorrow. Henry David Thoreau was a naturalist, meaning he believed in Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection. Thank you, Nicholas. Andre, go ahead. Thoreau was also an electrician that- Does that look like the word electrician to you? It says environmentalist. Nicholas, why is he even in this class? This is your last warning. Did the short bus drop him off the wrong school or something? What, am I wrong? Yes, you are. School is hard enough for him without students like you making it work. It's not any harder for him than it is on any of us. He's just lazy. That is not true. Never judge somebody until you've walked in their shoes. What are you talking about? I have a little idea. Are you interested in a little challenge? I'm always up for a challenge. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and finish reading where Andre left off. Just finish that paragraph. Thoreau was also an environmentalist. He frequently wrote poems and essays of social responsibility. See, that wasn't so hard. Good. My question is, how many times did I tap my pen? Huh? While you were reading, I was tapping my pen. Okay, so? I wasn't paying attention to that? So, I'm supposed to yell at you and call you names for not paying attention to me? That doesn't make any sense. You asked me to read, not listen to your pencil. Well, for someone with learning disabilities, it's hard to differentiate between the two. So now you know what it's like to have to try and pay attention to something while focusing on something else. I still don't get it. Okay, another challenge. I'm gonna give you a sentence, and all you have to do is write it down, okay? But, you can only look at that mirror, not at your paper. <laughs> Easy. Okay. To have made even one person's life a little better, that is to succeed. What's wrong? Just give me a sec. Why is this taking so long? Why does your handwriting look like a fifth grade? It's harder than it looks. How so? My mind is having a hard time telling my hand what to do. Exactly. One final challenge. I'm gonna write a sentence here on the board. I'm gonna move some letters around. Maybe mess with the spaces a bit. Can you tell me 
what I've written. Um. Um. My. Dad. Went. To. Put. Put? Where do you see that word? Why are you being so lazy? I'm not being lazy. I'm trying my hardest. Nobody else could get this either. Now you know what it's like living with a learning disability. This exercise simulates dyslexia. That's a reading disorder. This here with the mirror, that's dysgraphia, a writing disorder. And here with the tapping, that's attention deficit disorder. So you see, it's a lot harder than it looks. Right, Nick? I guess. All right, I hope that lesson was helpful for everybody. I'll uh, see y'all tomorrow. Andre, wait up. I, I want to apologize for how I've been treating you. I didn't understand how hard things were for you. Most people don't. Yeah. Well, Miss LeBrant was right. You should never judge someone before you've walked in their shoes. Can you forgive me? Of course. Thanks. I'll see you in class tomorrow. Sounds good. Hey, I'm glad I caught you. I just wanted to give you that. You got the highest score in the class. Good job. Wow, thank you. Just because we learn at different speeds doesn't, doesn't make someone smarter than the other. You're right. Have a good day. Emmy? What are you doing out here all by yourself? Oh, hi, Mrs. Thompson. I'm just waiting for my ride. Um. Sweetie, are you sure they're coming? Yeah, she's just running a little late. Okay, well, I'm just going to wait with you. And this works out well because I need a parent to sign your permission slip for tomorrow's field trip. <laughs> Oh, there's my ride. Hi. I am so sorry I'm late. Things just got a little crazy. <laughs> you know, school got out over 20 minutes ago. Poor Emmy's been sitting here waiting all by herself. That's not safe. Yeah, I know, and I, I'm so sorry. It just, I, I got off work late and traffic was kind of hectic, but I got here as soon as I could. Not a very good way to start off the first day of school. If this happens again, I'll have to write it up. I, I completely understand. I promise it won't happen again. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. I've been playing my game. I knew you were coming soon. Good. Where to go? Hold on. I need a parent to sign this. It's a permission slip for tomorrow's aquarium visit. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can sign it. Just need my pen. Well, you're not going to sign it. A parent needs to. Yeah, I know. I'm Emmy's legal guardian. <laughs> Okay, that's not possible. What are you, 18? There's no way you're her legal guardian. Actually, I'm 21, and I've been looking after Emmy for a while now. Okay, I don't understand. Well, it's sort of a long story, but if you need any proof, I could definitely get you some documents. No, I think I need to speak to the school. What, what was your name again? Quinn. I know it's a weird situation. No, to say the least. It definitely concerns me how young you are, especially given the fact that you couldn't pick up Emmy on time. I don't think you're fit to be her guardian. You know, I may be young, but my age doesn't define my abilities. And I think I do a pretty good job considering everything. What do you say? Yeah, Quinn's the best. I'll be watching you, Quinn. All right, let's go. Christian, I need you to put that away, okay? 
We'll get ready to go. The Thank bus you. will be here in about 15 minutes. Miss Faye, does everyone have their lunch? I think so. Um, where's your lunch, Emmy? Uh... Emmy? Quinn didn't give you anything to eat? No, but she's gonna drop it off soon, I think. Can you believe this? She didn't even bring poor Emmy lunch. Maybe she forgot. Oh, that's no excuse. Every parent here has made sure their child has something to eat. It's so irresponsible. I'm sure it wasn't on purpose. You confirmed with the school that Quinn is her legal guardian, right? Yes, but I swear that girl, that girl is not capable of being a legal guardian. I'm going to go speak to the principal once we're done with the field trip. Hey, got your lunch. Please tell me you got chicken nuggets. Oh, of course, fries and barbecue sauce too, your favorite. Thanks, Quinn, you're the best. Okay, I'll sit here. Quinn, that's what you bought her to eat? It is so unhealthy. She doesn't eat like this every day. Okay. Do you even feed her every day? Of course I do. Well, what kind of question is that? Okay, Quinn. What do you cook for her? I don't think that's any of your business. Great way to dodge a question. I can't even believe you would suggest that I would starve Emmy. You know what? You don't fool me. I was 21 once. You probably didn't make her lunch because you were out partying all night. <laughs> Actually, I have a full-time job and I'm a full-time student. So no, I wasn't partying. Right. Tell you what, I will take care of Emmy today. I will buy her lunch so she doesn't have to eat that garbage. Hi. Can I see that? Uh, sure. Thanks. Can you get them ready, please? Sure. All right, kids, gather in. No, don't. Why would you do that? She asked for that. I am going to go buy her some real food, like a responsible parent would do. Have a good day, Quinn. But you can't do that. I said, good day, Quinn. All right, everybody, let's go. We don't want to keep the bus waiting. All right, here you go. Oh, do you need any help with that? Yeah, just wait. I'll go get that. Hi. Hi. I'm looking for Ms. Myers. Yep, it's me. I'm Julie. I'm a caseworker with CPS. Uh, Child Protective Services? Um, are you, you sure you have the right house? You're Miss Quinn Myers, right? Yeah, I'm just confused why you're here. I'm just here for a brief home visit. Is it all right if I come in? Yeah, sorry, did, did someone call you or something? Or I just, I don't understand why you're here. We received a complaint. So I just need to do a routine inspection. Who complained? Unfortunately, we're not allowed to disclose that information. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I know who it was. Yeah, you can come on in. I was just helping her with her homework. Thank you. Child Protective Services? Seriously? Excuse me. You cannot just barge in here like that. I already have way too much on my plate. I don't need you adding more stress. You know what, Quinn? It's not my fault that you're an unfit mother and you can't take care of Emmy. I am just looking out for her. Then you shouldn't be trying to take her away from someone that loves her. I am the only person who can take care of her. Look, a lot of children go through the system and they turn out just fine. Emmy needs a responsible adult in her life to take care of her. Not a child who can't even pick her up on time. That happened one time. That's it, and I already told you what happened. Yeah, always an excuse. Just like you couldn't bring her a proper lunch. She eats fast food once a week because that's what she likes, okay. and I'm s Quinn, you know what? If you're such a great mother, then you have nothing to worry about. Personally, I'd rather take CPS's word for it. Yeah, and I hope they do take her. Do you have any idea what Emmy's been through? Or how I even became her legal guardian? No, I don't. Then I'll tell you. 
you see. Emmy and I grew up together living with our dad. My mom passed away when I was little and Emmy's mom abandoned her. Even though we both didn't have our moms, our dad showed us more love than we could ever ask for. He worked so hard to make sure we both had everything we needed and did whatever he could to keep us happy. So much so that he never told us he was sick. By the time Emmy and I found out, it was too late. It turned out our dad had late stage cancer. He never told us because he didn't want us to worry. That's how much he loved us. After he passed away, Emmy and I had no other family to go to. I was old enough to take care of myself. But since Emmy was under 18, she was taken away into the system. Losing her was just as hard as losing my father. After that, I did everything I could to get Emmy back. I found out I could become her legal guardian and I fought for months to make that happen. Despite my age, Seeing how responsible I was, the judge decided to say yes. I'll never forget the day I got her back. That day I promised her that no matter what, I would always be by her side. We've been together ever since. So you see, all she has. I, I know we're still adjusting to the situation, but there is no one that she should be with besides me. Please, just don't take her away from me. I mean, if not for me, then for Emmy's sake, please. Look, if what you're saying is true, then I'm really sorry that you've been through that. I really am. But just because you want to take care of Emmy doesn't mean you're able to. So like I said, I'll just wait for CPS's findings. Hello, Mrs. Thompson? Yeah. Hi, how'd it go? I'm still conducting my investigation, but after my initial inspection, I feel like Quinn is doing an incredible job taking care of Emmy. Really? Yeah. I'm very impressed, especially considering her age. But if anything changes, I'll let you know. Otherwise, I think her case will be closed pretty soon. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You think I should paint your nails? Yes, <laughs> please. You do such a good job. I swear I can't do it at all. Oh, coming one second. Hi. Miss Thompson, what are you doing here? I hope you don't mind me coming over like this. I got your address from the school. Quinn. I came over because I wanted to tell you how sorry I am for judging you. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. Well, CPS concluded their investigation and everything that you said is true. Emmy really is lucky to have you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming all the way out here. I mean, you really didn't have to do that. Oh, and also, I wanted to drop off this. Chicken nuggets, french fries, and barbecue sauce. Enough for the both of you. Thank you. You know, I was cooking dinner, but I think Emmy's gonna eat this. I'll take this. And also, 
We're having a field trip next week. Oh, yeah, I can have you sign that. No. What I was going to ask you is, would you like to join us? It would be a lot more fun having you there, especially because you're so great with the kids. Yeah, I'd love to. Thank you. Great. So I'll see you soon. You guys have a good night. Thank you. You too. Did you already eat all of them? Really? All of them? Come on, kids. <laughs> Teachers say we need fair pay. Teachers say we need fair pay. Teachers say we need fair pay. Hey, Dad. Teachers say. Look at what my teacher Miss J gave me. Teachers say. Oh wow, that's a very cool thing. Come on. Why are these teachers striking? They're just complaining about more pay, like they always do. Just ignore them. But Dad, you're the governor. Can't you help them? We need fair pay, Governor. <sighs> Please. Give us the pay increase that we deserve. Shouldn't you all be in a classroom teaching? Well, that's what we want to do. But we're barely surviving with how little we make. And a lot of our paycheck goes towards buying school supplies for our students. We hardly even have enough to buy groceries. Look, it is not my fault if you are irresponsible with your money, okay? I, look, I, I'm sorry, I just don't have time for this right now. Come on, let's go. Please, Governor Judy! Those teachers, they don't get paid enough. Is that true, Dad? Those teachers get paid more than enough. They just are irresponsible with their money. How about my teacher, Miss J? Does she make enough? Yes, even Miss J. Good, because she's the best teacher ever. Hello, Governor Judy. Where to today? We're going to City Hall, but uh, can you stop at the nearest convenience store on your way, please? Absolutely, sir. Okay, total is thirty ninety seven. Thirty, uh, I think this. Yeah. This is twenty two dollars and thirty nine cents. It's thirty ninety seven. Oh, come on, lady. I don't have all day. I'm really sorry, but that's all I have. Um, can you just take off the milk? Twenty-seven oh six. Still don't have enough. Seriously? This is unbelievable. Look, why don't you just take out some of these notebooks and pens? Do you really need so many? Well, I'm a teacher, and these are for my students. So, um, you can take off the eggs. Twenty two fourteen. Thank you. Just the water. Oh, and uh, the gum. The woman left her uh, milk and her eggs. Oh, she didn't have enough money. She's a teacher. I don't think they make very much. 432? Teachers make more than enough. <laughs> now you have a notebook to match your fan. <laughs> oh, Dad, this is Miss J, the teacher I was telling you about. Uh, hello. Hi. <laughs> You know, you left your uh, eggs and milk back in the store. Oh, yeah. Well, teachers don't get paid that much, so I didn't have enough. Again with this, you teachers love to complain. You know, teachers get paid more than enough. Well, I don't think you understand. You see, being a teacher is one of the lowest paying jobs in the country. Our paychecks are so small, we barely make enough to even keep up with our bills. Even though we barely get by, the school doesn't provide students with any supplies. 
so most teachers pay for them with the little money we have. It's not easy being a teacher, but seeing the smile on our students' faces makes it all worth it. So you see, the reason why I couldn't buy the milk and eggs was so I can get notebooks and pens for my students. Yeah, Dad. Miss Jay just gave me this new notebook. Oh my God. You did that for my son. I feel terrible about how I treated you. It's okay. Most people don't even know how hard it is being a teacher. Well, now I know. And thank you for helping me realize that. I know what I need to do. Teachers say we need fair pay. Teachers say we need fair pay. Teachers say- Gina, this is pointless. Let's just go. Excuse me. What are you doing back here? I came back because I, I wanted to apologize for how I treated you earlier. And um, I wanted to let you know that I've changed my mind. You did? Yeah, I, I, I realized how much teachers sacrifice for their students. And so moving forward, all teachers are going to get a pay raise. Did you hear what? that guy? Really? Yes, because I say teachers need fair pay. I say teachers need fair pay. I say teachers need fair pay. <laughs> You know the rules. No phones at the table. Everyone uses their phone while they eat. Not in this household, they don't. See you guys later. Where do you think you're going? You know you're not allowed to go out on weekdays. Sick of all your guys' rules. One day you guys are gonna wake up, and I'm gonna be gone. Just watch. Hey!